Good afternoon, my name is uh, Matt Andrews. I'm here at the Harvard Kennedy School uh, with the Building State Capability Program at the Center for International Development, or CID. Uh, we're very happy that you've joined us uh, because we are here to uh, present our PDIA Toolkit a DIY approach to solving complex problems. Many of you, I'm sure, have connected in because you know about PDIA, you may have tried PDIA, you may have done one of our courses. This toolkit is the uh, next step that we have in our work to try and democratize development and bring methods and approaches uh, into the public domain in a way that is easy, accessible for everybody. I'm here with uh, Tim McNaught on the end and Salima Samji, and I'm going to hand over to Salima right now. Great. So um, welcome everyone for watching our release of the toolkit. I want to start off by telling you a little bit about why we decided to create a toolkit. As many of you know, I think many of you are alumni of the PDIA course, is we have several things out there. And what we wanted is we have a book that's downloadable on our website. So if you look at the URL and you backslash book, you can see the book that actually has everything in here. We have a series of videos also available on, on our website. And we have the online course. So what we did not have is something that pulls everything together in one place. And so we created the toolkit. The toolkit is something that is downloadable. It um, the two areas, the two resources that, the, that it depends on is the book, which again is downloadable, and the videos. And what we've done is we've put it all in one place for you. So if you wanted to try PDIA and know what are the tools, how do I do this, this is your guide. Notice we called it a DIY approach. For those of you, when we went around the center asking people, what do you think of the title? Many people said, what's DIY? And we assume being in an American culture, everyone understands what DIY is. But for those of you, DIY DIY is do it yourself. We wanted to create a do it yourself guide to be able to do PDIA. So the toolkit has, I want to tell you a little bit about the toolkit. The toolkit has eight sections. The first section is on constructing the problem. PDIA always starts with constructing your problem. What is your problem? How do you tell a story about, of your, problem, about your problem? And why does it matter? To who does it matter? And then there's some worksheets on that. Then section two goes into deconstructing the problem. So after you construct what is your problem, then you want to deconstruct it. And we use the Ishikawa or fishbone diagram to do that. And that section walks you through how do you do this. There's videos. There's a whole chapter on it. And it gives you work. There's an example and then a worksheet where you get to try it yourself. Section three then is on sequencing or the triple A change space analysis. And I think I just want to turn to Matt. Matt, do you want to, this is something that you created. I want, I, and it's something that in our online course, everyone loves the triple A change space analysis. They find that it's a game changer because they work on complex problems and they may have even done a deconstruction before, but then they're like, okay, so now it's messy. How and where do I begin? So could you share a little bit about how you thought about this and how you came to this AAA change space analysis? Sure. I think uh, the key issue with breaking down a problem is that when you break it down, you can turn something that's big and impossible into many small parts, some of which are more possible than others. Um, but when you've broken it down into the small parts, as you say, you now have many small parts and you say, well, where do we act? And uh, theoretically, we have struggled with this question. How do we determine where you start in solving a problem, right? And there are many, many different theoretic theoretical arguments about this. Some people would say you have to start where the problem is the most severe. Some people would say you need to start where you have uh, lowest hanging fruit. Um, we kind of say you need to start where you have some space to start, right? <laughs> and so the question is, how do you find the space? Well, we work with governments in political environments, and the first question is, where do you have authority to even engage? Because if you say, well, it's a really severe problem, here's the worst part of it, we need to do something, but oh, we don't have authority, eh, you can't go there, right? The next thing is you need to have acceptance, because most parts of a problem are going to involve many different players. And so you need to be able to bring those players together, and they need to accept that it's, it's, it's a problem. And then the last one is you have to have some basic abilities, ideas, etc. So this is a very, very simple method that has quite a lot of theory behind it to answer the question, when you've identified a meta problem with lots of parts to it, how do you determine where you start? 
how do you determine where you go next and how do you determine where you go next. We just want it to be easy, accessible and useful. Section 4 is titled Crawling the Design Space and those of you who have taken the online course you know the book also has a diagram. When we look for solutions people usually jump directly to best practice as though that's the only place you can find solutions and in this section we give you options of four different areas where you can look for solutions. You can look at existing practice, you can learn from what you are, what you've done. There's positive deviance, there's latent practice, and there's best practice. So best practice isn't always the only place you need to go when you're looking for solutions. Section 5 talks about building and maintaining authorization. Authorization, again, is a really important thing that people don't necessarily understand. And I wonder, Matt, if you can say some things about this is another area where people who've taken our online course or executive education courses or in classrooms here, it's a game changer for them to think about authorization in a different way because they usually assume the person who has the title or the person at the top is the authorizer. And we found that's not often the case. Yeah, you know, it, it, again, when you're working in a bureaucracy, authority matters. It's not all about leadership, it's about authorization. It is about who has power and who has influence, often because of their position. But sometimes it's not because of their position in terms of their title. It's because of what kind of power do they have, how long have they been there, what power, you know, what do they control. And we find that in many cases people will say, I just need a sponsor. And they'll say, I just need the minister. And if the minister's on my side, it's great. And we say, no, you need to think more about that. You need to have, um, you need to say, what do I need authority for? You know, and if the minister may be able to give you authority over some things, but the minister may not be the one who hires people. That may be done by somebody who is a mid-level official. Right. Uh, the minister may not have any um, authority over people who are not in her ministry. And so you may need to find people in, from a different ministry. So the way in which we teach this is not about getting an authorizer per se. It's about creating an authorizing environment where you think critically, what do I need authority to? For who do I need to get that authority from and then how do I maintain it and even build it over time because the other thing we observe is ministers come and go, so do civil servants. So you need to constantly be thinking about your authorizing environment and be actively building it, not just passively depending upon it. Section 6 is a really important section because it's where you get to design your iteration. Oftentimes people say, what is an iteration, how does it work? Our iterations are short. They're usually what action are you going to take this week or in a two week period? And that's what you chart out because you can't have a solution to what it is you're gonna do, but you can have action steps of what is it I'm going to do this week or in the next two weeks. And that's, it has a really nice worksheet that helps you identify what is it that I'm going to do this week. And then section seven is titled learning from your iterations has the iteration check-in tool. Because the check-ins for the iteration, you need to do on a weekly basis, right? And we have four questions that we always ask. What did you do? What did you learn? What are you struggling with and what's next? It's very simple, but we find that it's really profound in being able to set a routine and allowing the learning to be fed back directly into the action that you're taking. So based on what you learn this week, you then change, okay, now what's my next action items for next week? And then you will check in at the end of that time period and that iteration continues until you've solved your problem or move on to another area because a, a complex problem will never really be solved ever. But you will move to different areas that need solving next. And then our last section basically is a very blue sky um, where we have this video of Matt talking about PDIA is worthwhile but hard. Do you want to say some things about that? Well, it's a great video to go watch. Um, <laughs> it is. You, so, if you haven't seen it, you should watch it. Yeah, so, you know, I think, I think one of the comments is we've been working on this for a while. You know, it's probably about 10 years ago that the idea of PDIA was kind of raised. I think we came up with the title. And a lot of people came to us and said, help us to do PDIA. And we've really, really tried to pull back and not be the ones kind of creating a new consultancy tool. This is not about consultancy. This is about doing real things in real ways. We've experimented with this in a number of countries with uh, probably over 50 teams in the last uh, decade. Um, so that all of these tools kind of fit in somewhere, they have a home. We don't always use all of the tools in every interaction because there's a flexibility with this. But we do find that you know if you want to do development in this way, 
If you want to tackle the really hard things, if you want to go through the process of really having authority to do things, um, that's difficult. And it's, it's, it's not something that you should think, well, this is a silver bullet for everything you do. Yeah. This is a set of processes that can help you um, engage with very difficult terrain. The other thing that we don't really get into over here is just how do you build people to go with you? How do you build teams around you? How do you build people who you can learn from, who you can bounce ideas off? That's something that's going to be answered by each person, each individual, each team as they move uh, along in this. Um, but we wanted people to be very aware up front that this is real, this is difficult. It is also tremendously rewarding. Wherever we've worked, this has opened doors, it's opened opportunities, I think, for individuals who've been in the teams, for the teams and for the governments themselves. So this is really, really um, rewarding, but difficult. Our colleague Lance says what? You can't juggle without a struggle. That's and, and we have a video is, on that yeah, too, where he really does too. try to juggle. Yeah. So you check that out. The other thing we wanted to talk about the toolkit we had to design something that is linear. So it is very linear, but PDIA is not linear. But the only way to be able to convey this to someone, especially who's never seen this, is a linear way. So we urge you that this is a messy process. You will be jumping back and forth in things. You will be, every tool in here is dynamic. It should not, if you're using it statically, then you're not doing what, what, what our expectation is. The fishbone diagram should be revised. All of the worksheets you do as you learn more should be updated. But there was no way to put a toolkit out in a form that's messy and now go back to this section. So we ask you to take that after you've looked through it, especially if this is new to you, you will want to read it in a linear manner, but use it in a very messy way. And the last thing that I wanted to say about this is because of our commitment to openness, as you see the Oxford University Press called Building State Capability, is under a Creative Commons license and the, and the PDF is downloadable on our website. Our online course is free. We're committed to diffusing these ideas to implementers on the ground who really need this the most. And because of that, we have also released this under a Creative Commons license. But we've also understood that people no, don't necessarily understand what a Creative Commons license is because it's new. So I just wanted to, sell, to spell out to you what that means in terms of how you can use this toolkit. If you use this, and we hope that you use it, you need to attribute this work back to us because this is our creative, this is our license and our copyright. It has a non-commercial license, which means you cannot charge. If you hold a workshop to teach people this, you cannot charge them, or you cannot put out something and charge people because that is not the license we are allowing under this or any of the stuff that we put out. And finally, no derivatives. You can't take it, mix it up, and put it out. That violates the, uh, the license that we have. We've put that in the first page just so that you can take a look at it and remember what is a license to use that. But subject to those, you are free to use it. And we would love for you to be able to share your stories of how you are using it and how it's helping you back with us on our website. If you see that's the URL where you can download the toolkit, we will have an email address and you can always tweet to us and tell us what you're learning from this. Matt, yeah. did you want to and say Just to anything say about else? the Creative Commons license, we use that license because it is the license that we think allows the easiest spread of this work yes. to the most number of people. Um, we, we are not here to create a new consulting model or to create a new consulting firm or to provide new ways for consulting firms to make money. We actually think that a lot of the missing elements in management and implementation in development are common sense. And we've tried to create a common sense tool here that you can use wherever you are. Because you know they say that common sense is the least common of the senses. Well, hopefully this will make it a little bit more common. And we wanted a Creative Commons license that would allow that, would foster that. So it's just something that allows everybody to use this, nobody to grab a hold of it and keep it under wraps. Great. Tim, how are we for sure. coming on over? All right, so uh, we're taking questions now. So I wanted to ask Matt and Slima. I have a question from Camila. This is very cool. Is it for people working in governments only? 
back to you. And if you have any more questions, feel free to send them now. Um, sure. I mean, I mean, my answer is no, not at all. You know, we work with governments. That's what we do because we're in the Building State Capability Program, and that's what we do. We have found that people have taken the course who work in the nonprofit sector, the private sector. Consulting firms have taken the course, and sometimes they've used the course to work on their own internal problems. We've actually had people who've yeah. come and said to us, I use the PDA stuff in my own personal life to manage like my, my household relationships. I say, more power to you. You know, again, this is common sense. If there's anything in value in, in there that is valuable for you to use anywhere in your life, I think go for it. And I think our goal was to create something that is valuable, that creates what we think is that takes what we think is some of the best ideas about getting things done in the world puts them into something that is easy to use and it should be easy to use and useful in many areas of your life yeah well thank you very much for tuning in and we hope we'll be posting this url it's a uh currently accessible. We hope you download it and you use it and you share stories about how you're using it and how it's useful. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.